Taylor Swift has just ticked off a whole bunch of industry professionals because she's protecting her own intellectual property and using her IP to make herself money while cutting out the middleman. There are some really cool things that entrepreneurs can learn from this, so let's talk to everybody's favorite IP and entertainment lawyer, Tony, to find out more. My name is Tony Oikostas. I'm an adjunct professor of entertainment law and IP at New York Law School, and I have an Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok account called The IP Professor that is dedicated to all things intellectual property. Tony, Taylor Swift has made some people mad this week. Let's talk about what happened and why it's so important for people who are creating their own intellectual property to be aware of the same thing. Well, let me first say that Taylor Swift just continues to elevate herself in the greatest of all time status among all the other goats out there. And I'm like, I'm starting to think that she's putting herself in the same level of Michael Jordan. That could be a dispute with a lot of people, but honestly, she has become such a trailblazer in so many regards. But the news this past week or in recent weeks has been, you know, a clear display of how groundbreaking she is as an entertainer and even as an entrepreneur. So obviously, many of you know, we've had the SAG strike going on. We have the WGA strike. This has greatly affected Hollywood because there have been certain projects that are airing right now or being released in movie theaters with no, you know, active marketing campaign by actors or actresses participating they're basically embargoed from doing any sort of press. There are certain films that are getting pushed into the next calendar year in 2024. So obviously, I, I think Hollywood studios are feeling the heat. But obviously, you know, when someone like Taylor Swift comes in, she's going to provide a lot of uh, news. And surely she did that uh, in recent weeks when she announced that she teamed up with AMC to release a film version of her Eras Tour concert film that was filmed in California that version of the concert would be uh, displayed uh, in movie theaters across the country and around the world. Um, the main deal that she dealt with was with AMC along with uh, Cinemark and Regal, the big three of the movie theater chains. But this is what's imp very impressive about this whole thing. She herself, meaning her team, worked directly with the movie theater chains to have basically brokered this film distribution deal that would allow the direct revenue share of you know any box office ticket sales in her back pocket, and then whatever portion the, the movie theater chains are are able to receive, they would get that other share of it. Usually, it would be a 50-50 split or maybe 55-45 split. It really varies depending on the film distribution deal. But let's say, for argument's sake, it's a 50-50 deal. 50% 50 of box office sales go to Taylor Swift. 50% go to all the other uh, theater chains. This is big for a lot of reasons because normally – Films are distributed by film studios. They operate as the film distributor. So Oppenheimer was uh, distributed by Universal. That's the film studio that made the film. So Universal is the one that contacts Regal, AMC, Cinemark, all the other big chains, the mom and pop uh, movie theaters to basically broker a film distribution deal where the film, the film, uh, or so rather the movie theater chain will pay X amount of dollars to have that film uh, in their theaters for X number of weeks. In exchange for that, the film gets shown, and then both both parties, the, the movie theater chain and the film distributor, would share the profits of the box office, which is, I think, what underlines why box office sales are so pivotal to the success of a film, because you're sharing that. that All that money is not going to the film distributor. That's being shared with the movie theater. So if a film that was expected to do incredibly well flops in the box office, that could lead to bad accounting on the back end for that specific film. But anyway, you know, Oppenheimer is an example with Universal. Universal operates as a film distributor. The Barbie movie was made by Warner Brothers, so Warner Brothers operates as a film distributor. But it turns out that Taylor Swift did not do that with with her Eris film. In fact, she I think there were, were discussions that she was talking to other film studios and decided to just go on her own. According to Puck News, Universal was, quote, extra pissed at the fact that she went behind all the film studios back, all the film distributors back, and decided to work directly with theater chains. So, understandably so, they're all upset, right? Because Taylor Swift is a moneymaker. She probably has a net worth well over a billion dollars. She is a highly profitable and highly successful uh, artist, entertainer in her own right. And so... The fact that she was able to broker this deal, I think, speaks to how incredibly talented she is, but also speaks to how this direct-to-consumer model that she's, in effect, engaging in 
may be the model that we're going to see with other musicians down the road. Who's not? What's not to say that Beyonce could do that with her Renaissance tour, which she's actively touring in now? What's to say that Drake, who's also on tour right now, could do that? Or Ed Sheeran? There could be a world where all those artists record a version of their concert and they also adopt a direct-to-consumer model where they go directly to the to the movie theater chains, broker the deal, and you cut out the middleman by dealing with a film distributor. So obviously, this is a new model that I think is going to take a lot of notice and become a norm in the film industry for sure. And then obviously, this underlines all the more how Taylor Swift is coveting and giving putting respect on the name of her copyright. She's doing that right now with the music that she's re-recording because even though all of her old sound recordings, all of her older albums are under the copyright of Big Machine Records, she owns the copyright to every last song that was ever written, that she ever wrote from the first six albums that she ever recorded. That is under her name, her copyright, that has not been handed over to a music publisher because she owns the copyright to that, she's able to go to a studio, re-record all of the older, all of that music, and release it as Taylor's version. And we're seeing that in real time with her fourth Taylor's version being 1989 coming out in a few weeks. Clearly, she has a handle of copyright law. She is a, 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 a novice, not a novice, I, sorry, I should say she's a veteran of understanding uh, copyright law. She understands and, and, and can appreciate the importance of protecting her copyright. This whole thing that we're seeing right now with the Eras Tour, this is underlining all the more how she values and appreciates her copyright, and she's not willing to forfeit those rights to another company for the sake of getting a, a nice payday, which really she doesn't need. This is more passive income for her, but honestly, this is just pivotal in so many ways. I love this for her, and I think that this is a great model for the film industry going forward. And I love this because we're seeing this in other industries too. Authors are now going direct to consumer and not bothering with publishers. We are seeing the music industry take responsibility for their own music and not working with labels and being able to keep those profits and the royalties and make the decisions for themselves and retain that copyright of their music, of their books, of their creative works. So as entrepreneurs, what can we take away from this, Tony? The bottom line is uh, to identify all the IP that you have in your portfolio. You mentioned you know, uh, music as an example. That's a great example because... Um, I think a lot of uh, young budding musicians have been quick to realize that if they write lyrics and they sell it off to a publisher, they may not see um, a pretty viable paycheck at the end of the day, especially if the royalty share really isn't that good. If we're now in this age with social media where you can literally write a song, post it on TikTok, and the virality of it will kick off, it, it will shoot through the stars. So honestly, if you're whether you're a musician whether you're um, you know, an artist, whether you're an author, taking stock of understanding what IP you have in your back pocket and then understanding the value of it is, is going to be a very pivotal part of this process. And then I would say the next step is you know, I try to, to play around with this direct-to-consumer model. If you have good music, write it, perform it, and post it on social media and see where it goes. If you have a good book, do a self-publishing model and see where that takes you. All of those will probably lead to a much better um, stream of revenue for you in the long run. Again, you cut out the middleman and you see how it goes. And if you feel like it isn't for you, then you move, you go down the traditional route. It doesn't hurt. But I think people like Taylor Swift are providing a really good rally cry for a lot of creators out there that you can be, you can still be a very successful person and be a worldwide icon. Not to say that, you know, you know, no, other musicians aren't, but she just has claimed her, she hasn't really established herself as that over the past, you know, uh, 15 years that she's been performing, maybe even more. But, you know, understanding that you have this, this IP and taking stock of that and, try, you know, making active efforts to monetize off that by you yourself, the, the direct creator of that. I mean, this is just... This is groundbreaking. I hate that I'm repeating myself, but it is so groundbreaking in so many ways. And I think that this is uh, surely a, a great case study for any creator to follow. Um, and I think this is not the first. This is not the first and last time we're going to see Taylor Swift adopt this model. And surely this is not going to be the first and last time we see this model adopted, um, especially with other big time musicians like Taylor Swift. And if you are taking stock of your own IP, we've got lots of videos on what 
to do with it to keep it legally protected. We'll link the playlist for you down below. But if you've got questions, now's the time. Tony's coming back for upcoming episodes to help us deal with our intellectual property. He's right there, got it on his shirt, which by the way, you can get from his collection. <laughs> and you can check that out over on his social media. So Tony, where can everybody find you and your really cool shirts? You can find me on Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok at the IP Professor. And obviously all the merch stuff is in the link in my bios and TikTok and Instagram. And of course, you could check out my entertainment law podcast called End Scene. New episodes drop every Friday on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. If you're a Swifty, get your hands up in my comments and let me know what your favorite song is. And if you've got questions on your entrepreneurial journey from the legal side to the creative side to the marketing side to the business side, go ahead and drop those down below. We're dropping videos every single day to help you navigate your entrepreneurial journey to make this your most profitable year ever so that you can thrive in your space, create luxury time in your business and have your business work on your behalf to make you money and to thrive without having to be hands-on every minute of every day. We'll see you in the upcoming episodes.